what's going on YouTube, this is CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 15 of my 120 gallon reef system. Now this episode is going to be all about the Neptune Apex. As long as I wanted to get my hands on one of these things, I've finally been able to get one installed and I'm excited to share this with you guys and hopefully share a lot more content to come as far as programming and how I'm actually going to use this on my system. So. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and get started. Now at the time of this video, this was the latest version of the Neptune Apex, the 2016 model. But before we open it up, let's take a quick look at a few accessories I got with it, including this magnetic probe holder. Now if you guys are familiar with my sump, it's all glass and baffles. It really wasn't custom made for probes, so this is definitely a welcome addition and a needed addition for me to be able to put these probes in the best place and be able to move them around as I need. And the next additional item is gonna be this PM1 module. And in my opinion, this is very, very important, especially with me wanting to run multiple pH probes for my calcium reactor, for the tank, and for whatever else I want to monitor. Now, I got to admit to you guys, as soon as I opened the package and I seen all these illustrations and, you know, the summaries as far as it being able to monitor your power and your tank and your pH and control everything, I really started to get excited about the potential. So let's take a quick look at what's included. The first box I'm showing you is going to be the main brain unit for the Apex pretty much where everything connects to and where everything is controlled from. Now this Apex also includes probes for monitoring your tank, including an ORP probe, pH probe, salinity probe, and temperature probe. All of these connect to the main Apex brain, and I'll show you that a little later how I got that done. Now the next item included is gonna be the EB-8. Trust me guys, this is not your normal eight outlet power strip. Not only does it power your equipment, it also tells you how much power they use, not to mention, has a ton of additional ports, allows you to hook up different modules, your lights, your pumps. It basically allows your whole tank to be powered off that one strip. Now the last item included is gonna be the calibration fluids for your pH probes and your salinity probes. So let's go ahead and get to setting this thing up. Now, unfortunately, as with everything else on this channel, I set this Apex up using my cell phone. So I really didn't have a lot of opportunities to record anything. But with that being said, all of the instructions are easy to follow and located at the neptunesystems.com slash getting started page. Highly recommend you go follow those instructions step by step. Don't skip it. Don't look at YouTube. Don't look at setup videos. Follow the instructions listed on their site and that will help get you on the right path and pretty much get you set up within a couple of hours. Besides downloading all the necessary software updates, the second longest part of this install had to have been calibrating the probes. Now I did temperature acclimate all the pH probe fluid I forgot the salinity fluid, but you know, we'll cross that bridge later down the road. But one thing I will mention, be very careful when you're removing the end caps for these probes. It has protective fluid to keep them from going dry, but it is on there pretty good. And if you're not careful, you could easily break your probe. Now to be honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure I calibrated everything correct. Try my best to follow the instructions on the Neptune site. I even included some RO water to help rinse the probe between calibration fluids, wiped it off, to help make sure I didn't contaminate anything. So far, I think I got it pretty well, but if there is one word of advice I can give anyone that's wanting to purchase one of these Apex units, go ahead and buy additional calibration fluid right out of the gate. You know, I wish I had some extra fluid on hand to go ahead and recheck it, you know, and make sure everything was right. But for now, I'm just gonna roll with the calibration numbers that I have, and I'm gonna recalibrate it again in another few weeks, just to make sure everything's still where it needs to be. So now the fun part begins. You know, it starts off with a quick trip to Home Depot because I don't have many tools and hopefully come up with a plan to manage the wires that I've accumulated over this time. You know, if you take the eight power wires I have for my equipment and you add all the Apex probes to it, the Aquabus cables, the modules and everything else, it turns into a huge spaghetti, you know, hornet's nest of wires that is just an eyesore and it's going to be horrible to maintenance if I have to change something. So, you know, I came up with an idea. Got a couple of backboards, got some scotch tape, some paint, a drill, and came up with a few ideas as far as trying to manage all these things on one board. And here goes the final result. And I gotta admit, it doesn't look too bad at all. Especially when you compare it to that pile of wires and modules I had sitting on top of my auto top off container. This is a million times better. And I gotta tell you guys, you know, this tank's been full of a bunch of little DIY projects, whether it be the floating canopy or rebuilding my sump, the plumbing, it seems like every small job I complete really brings me that much closer to my tank. It really makes me enjoy it that much more. So I encourage anyone, if it's something you can do yourself on your tank, it's so much more rewarding 
to build it and enjoy the outcome. Now when it comes to everything else, it's all efficiently placed on the board, the EB-8 modules on the bottom closer to the plugs, left a little room between the modules to allow for expansion, and with it being put on hinges, I can actually access the back of the board and put modules on the back as well. Now when it comes to the probes, I install one pH probe in my calcium reactor and the rest of the probes are on the magnetic probe rack right in the first chamber of my sump. Now the reason for this is because I felt like the first chamber was going to get all of the water from the display and it helped me monitor what the tank is actually doing. Not what's downstream of the heater as far as the temperature, not what's downstream of anything. I want to find out what my main display is doing and not what my sump is doing. Now one thing I did find I had to do was reroute the salinity probe around the front of this fan. I was getting electrical interference with all of those wires going together and it was throwing off my salinity probe's reading. So just kind of a quick FYI if anyone's having additional issues, try rerouting that wire and you may see better results like I did. So with all that being said, there still is one more project to complete. Figuring out some kind of way or building a structure to where I can enclose my auto top off reservoir, this five gallon jug, and my five pound CO2 canister, which will be installed right on this area on the floor. So, you know, more to come on that, I'll update you guys. So what are my first thoughts when it comes to this Neptune Apex? Well, to be honest guys, this is my first tank controller, so I can't really compare it to, you know, previous Apex versions or Reefkeeper Lights or any other controller. But what I will say, just like everyone else, I did have a sense of anxiety when that box first came in not really wanting to open it, fearing it you know, being a lot of trouble to install, but I was pleasantly surprised. It went very, very easy. I set the entire thing up on my cell phone and just using Wi-Fi, so that definitely checks the box for me with it being easy to install. Now, the second most intimidating factor has to be programming the Apex controller. And one thing I've learned is that you can make this as easy or as hard as you want it to be. It already has pre-programmed outlets. It tells you where to hook your skimmer, your return pump, your heater, your lights, it already has each outlet programmed with a setting that will just run your tank for you. Now you can use that and roll with it and be perfectly fine. Or you can go the advanced route and customize everything, which is the road I'm trying to travel now. Well, some of you are wondering, you know, what are my plans for this Apex? How am I going to use it on the tank? Well, in the immediate future, it is going to be my primary control of my calcium reactor to make sure I don't overmelt my media or drop my pH too much in my tank. It's gonna monitor that for me 24 seven and alert me if something goes wrong or shut something off for me. Second thing I'm gonna use it for is temperature control. Making sure I don't boil my tank. If my heater fails, it's gonna take care of that for me. And the third thing is just making sure everything's running stable. I'll tell you, once you get a taste of being able to monitor your tank and seeing trends and track things over time, it really becomes addicting and you really start seeing the value of a tank controller. So I think this is a pretty good point to start wrapping up this video. I really just wanted to show you guys what the Apex included, you know, how I installed it and what it looks like on my system so far. So, you know, everything's going well and I do plan on giving you guys more content when I learn more as far as programming it and how I'm actually going to use it in the future. So other than that, hey, as always, you guys can like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.